I know we'd like to just walk into a bowling center and, and bowl the way we want to and bowl like we do in league, but that really is very unrealistic, correct? Yeah, it doesn't happen that way. you got to get a lot of information before you get ready to get out there and compete. And it's important to know there's a lot of different ways you can go collect information and know just a lot of, a lot of things before you even throw that first ball in the competition. It's amazing. Uh, when I bowled the Queens last year, I knew Team USA had been bowling there you know, before the tournament came into town. And I talked to a few of the players, actually, and some of the coaches that were watching Team USA Bowl and asked them about how the bowling center was from, you know, lane one to lane 30, because there's such a difference in pair to pair. Yeah, it's huge. Whenever you can get information from people that have already competed there, or maybe just the league bowlers, like you said, that are locals there, it's really easy to learn characteristics. And if you're moving across the format of your tournament or whatever event you're in, that can be valuable information when you start talking about what to do in different parts of the house. And it's amazing. If you ever pay attention, when you do walk into a bowling center, usually you see a lot more of the bowling going on in, in front of the desk. So I, I hear people <laughs> often say when they're bowling a league, oh, Lanes one and two, they're so different. They're so much tighter. Well, because there's not as much play on them because a lot of the bowling is centered around that control counter when you walk into the bowling center. And I do notice that a lot when I do go to different tournaments. Yeah, it's something to be said for where players are placed just in general recreational play or in tournaments or leagues. Um, a lot of times you'll see a lot of traffic around those areas and less on the outside parts of the bowling center. So you can expect those lanes to play differently when you get to those parts of the house. Okay, well I was just talking to someone recently and their bowling center now is taking out wood lanes, which you don't hear very much of anymore, and they're putting in synthetic. What are, what's a little bit of the difference between that wood lane and the synthetic lane? Big difference in those two. The wood lanes tend to be softer surface, therefore the bowling balls tend to react a lot sooner or, or even more. So because of that amount of friction, it's a lot higher when we talk about the wood surface. Um, you may change the type of equipment you're going to throw or the type of uh, way you're going to throw the ball as far as how fast or what my hand's going to do. Um, now synthetic lane surfaces, they're harder. They're a lot, a lot harder surface. The ball slides a lot more across the lane, a lot more skid. Um, so you may have to change that equipment and that ball speed as well to adjust for just that basic information, which is whether it's wood or whether it's, it's synthetic. So a lot of times when we say the lanes are tighter, yes, it might be because of the oil pattern, but it also could be the surface too. So let's talk about the oil pattern now. Um, big difference, what are the two factors I should look at if my bowling center or the tournament provides me with an oil pattern, what should I look at? Good. Um, if they give you information regarding what you're going to compete on, look for two things. Number one, look for the distance. The farther the oil pattern or the longer it goes down the lane, the, the less back end reaction you'll have, so you'll need to play your angles probably closer to the pocket. You get a shorter oil distance pattern, maybe somewhere around 35, 36 feet, somewhere in that shorter distance area, um, you're going to have your angles more closer to the gutter and you're going to have more reaction coming into the back of the lane. Okay, now it's amazing because we just gave you a little tip there and it, it really is rule of thumb. The longer the pattern, probably the more inside you're going to play. The shorter the pattern, the more outside you're going to play. But now that's just a tip. I don't want anybody to leave and go, well, they told me this. One of the key factors to actually being versatile and really learning more about your equipment and what you can do is you should still try all parts of the lane no matter what the pattern states, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Don't, don't take for granted that just because it's short you have to be in a certain place. Try the different zones of the lane. Play outside, play in the track area, play in the middle part of the lane. Um, try all of those in your practice session with as many pieces of equipment as you can to try and give you the best look for where you want to play. Okay, we've talked about the length of the pattern, which should basically tell us what area of the lane we should be playing. But what about that stuff they put on the lane, the oil? the volume, what, what does that dictate? Yeah, that's the other factor you want to pay attention to. The thicker volumes, when you see those on a pattern sheet, the, the typically the stronger equipment you're going to want to use. A little more surface, maybe a little bit stronger core. Um, you're going to want a ball that's going to actually pick up that, that heavier volume and kind of go right through it. Now when you use a lower, see a lower volume pattern, you're going to use um, maybe polished equipment. You're going to use stuff that's weaker, uh, typically. Now, depending on the distance, once again, all these factors play into whether or not you're using a specific type of ball. But those two key factors are really what you look at when you talk about lane patterns. Yeah, a lot of times, um, and I know we've discussed it when we're practicing with Team USA, on those shorter patterns, a lot of times, even though we use weaker equipment, we still have strong drills in those balls to actually get them to read the lane a little bit different. So, like you said, yes, you can play around with surface, but sometimes, even though you have a weaker ball, putting a strong drill in it 
gives you a different look. Yeah, you're always looking for balance. Uh, cover stock is going to have a lot of effect on what's going on with ball motion, but the fine tuning like you're talking about is getting that right kind of drill just so that, that it makes the, the best reaction and the best overall motion to give you the best results. Okay, so we learned about some of the things that we can find out about the bowling center. Uh, you know, the topography, what lane surface, the pattern they're going to have. Okay, how do we take care of us, yeah. the bowler, before we get there? We got, we got a lot more information we can collect before we ever get to any event. Um, number one, know the format. Know how many games you're going to bowl. Know, know how many times you're going to change lanes if that's the case. Um, just know basically. Grab the flyer in the center. That'll tell you a lot about what's going to happen or speak to somebody that's been at the event. Um, there's plenty of other information. Um, not only knowing the lane surfaces, but also know, um, like we talked about earlier from other local bowlers, whether or not there's tendencies in the house. Um, there's plenty of other things you can do. Um, be prepared with your tools. Know what you're capable of and what, you're, what you prefer to do, whether it's speed changes or whether it's loft, whether it's changing equipment really easily or just changing your footwork on the lanes. There's plenty of other things you got to know that you're prepared to do in order to just go be successful. Um, and there's also several things you can also look at um, outside of just your tools, um, mentally being prepared. Knowing the format, knowing what, what the environment's going to be like, knowing if there's going to be a roll off or maybe a step ladder final, and just being mentally prepared along the way are all things you can do before you ever step on the lane and throw your first shot. All right, so make sure that when you're getting ready to either bowl league or a tournament, you know what the bowling center is all about and that your toolkit for you is ready to go.